Hi, I'm Dr. Nikita Visniak. I am the primary author of the Muscle Manual, and today I'd like to take a minute to walk you through what the new updated version includes. The older versions are great, they're nice, but this new version, after 20 years of doing this, I'm finally happy, it's crisp, it's tight, it's fantastic. So to begin with, we can see the title. Basically, it takes you through muscle testing, functional anatomy, palpation, posture assessment, gait analysis. We give strengthening exercises, kinesiology, range of motion, goniometry, and even further into anatomical variation, case studies and critical thinking are all involved in this process. So the basic understanding is anatomy, assessment, action. That's the process we're going through. Learn your anatomy, learn how to assess it, and then pick the appropriate actions for the given client or patient in front of you. So if we flip through the pages on our online reader, you can see inside the front cover, we have a layout, a blow up layout of the table of contents. So any muscle that you want to see really quick or any exercises or any ligaments, you can look at those super fast. And then you progress into the basic layout of the entire book, which is anatomy, assessment, and actions. Again, Every chapter starts with a objectives for the student or the learner to go ahead and take as their baseline of function that they're going to get from it. And every chapter ends with a quiz that you can self test to see that you've actually met those objectives. Progressing through the layout is the same for all of the muscles. We do a simple two page spread that lays flat when you're trying to study and it shows you the muscle itself, origins and insertions, actions, nerves, blood supply, and then we list synergists as well that are involved with it. Antagonists are listed at the start of each chapter. Beyond that, we go into clinical notes where we talk about anatomical variation that you might see on cadaver dissection. And then we progress into activities of daily living where you actually use this muscle and might injure it. So common injuries covers that. Moving down, we even give you a differential diagnosis. Yeah, it could be a rotator cuff strain, but I think we can do better than that. What else could be involved with this? We have palpation that includes videos of palpation of all the muscles on our website with overlays, highly usable for students and for clinicians who've forgotten some of their, some of their learning, if I'm not mistaken. What else do we have? Muscle testing, ABCs. So we have videos for all of the muscles of the body that you can look at, again, with overlays, lots with cadaver dissection videos, trigger point referral patterns, and then a ton of information by muscle, motion medicine, listing stretching and strengthening activities you might do for that muscle. And that's the basic, syn that's the basic synopsis of the entire book. So every muscle, two page layout, ultra simple, ultra fast for you to find that information, directly clinically relevant, fantastic. All right. Then if you across through, there's for students, so ways that you can improve your overall studying as you're looking at this. For instructors, ways to improve your delivery of the content. And it also remind me too, look at our videos. They help students understand. They're all about two minutes long, super quick, super succinct to get the information they need to know to perform better on your exams and perform better in practice. We also have flashcards that are available as well, as, as well as multiple other supporting uh, resources. Yeah, just special thanks to all the authors who helped do this. The research is clear. If you use pen and paper, you will learn information better. If you write it out, you will learn it better. And that's part of the process for this book. In fact, every page is designed to be cover up one side of the page and you can make yourself a quiz out of it. So wherever you see our numbered system for studying, it makes an instant quiz to really see if you understand the information. We talked briefly about palpation and layers of the body, identifying tissue specific injuries. Is it muscle, ligaments, tendon, all of that good stuff, getting to treatment options that you might have available. Uh, then we go into, of course, washing your hands and introduction. So this basically gets you through the fundamental part of what you have to know for anatomy, anatomical orientation, layers of the body, skeleton, blow up of bones, axial and appendicular, bones of the hands and foot. And then we go into landmarks progressing further, taking you into some bone structure, but making it clinically relevant because bone structure with osteoporosis, bone structure with tennis players' arms, showing you increased bone density from where, from uh, increased load over time with that structure. Then we take you into fractures and identifying male and female and bony types. And of course, joints and joint types, 476 joints in the body verified by three PhD professors, two at UBC and one at the University of Western States, as well as multiple, multiple undergrad students. I feel sorry for them. I made them go through that list so many times, but they did a great job. So fantastic. On the cartilage, range of motion. So you get all of your basic ranges of motion done. Then you get into the specifics of muscle tissue, where you can see origin and insertions, concentric, eccentric, concentric, contractor of tissue, all of that good information is there 
muscle contraction, sliding filament theory, you know, different stress strength and curves. How do you actually do muscle testing, nervous system introduction? Then we briefly talk about fascia, which we know is a huge topic, but a quick two page spread with cadaver images to show you what's going on there. And a little bit on skin and body mass index, of course, trigger points. And then the layout for the book is pretty much the same all the way through. So every chapter kind of goes through like this, where you can see the bones themselves, color coordinated. Again, cover up this one side right here, and you've got yourself an instant quiz to see if you understand it. Progressing into the joints, progressing into the muscles as a general layout. And then we break down each muscle individually with videos showing you how to palpate, stretch and strength and everything. So these are just muscles of the face to go ahead and start. But again, what do students find really beneficial? If they can lay out all the muscles side by side to see how they vary from one to the other, see how they're the same and see how they vary. So really good learning opportunities there, making it simple, simple two page spread. So we also have a workbook that goes with this that makes it easier for students as well. Yeah, just progressing through all the muscles of the face here, super quick. Kind of want to get a little bit further ahead. Muscles of mastication as we progress in. Uh, these are actually some pretty good pictures. These are from Gray's Anatomy. And the images we have are from top tier illustration experts. They're from Gray's Anatomy. H.V. Carver, I believe it was, who did these ones. And Paul Richer is another one that we use a lot of. Just fantastic doctors who have modified their drawings and made some excellent content here for you. But even if you're teaching something like medial pterygoid or lateral pterygoid, it's nice to have views from inside the mouth in full color where you can see where these attach to, right? Yeah, and then back into the throat, ear, of course, is going to be important, you know, skull foramen, introduction to cranial nerves, which we talk about later on in the neurovascular chapter, sagittal views as well, back muscles, again, what's the process? The process is simple. Students respond better to this. It is, these are the bones, these are the ligaments, these are the muscles. Let's look at the details now. That's going to make this easier for you. So here's pictures of the ligaments and we have ligament origin and insertion tables and basic function. I think you should go back to that one for a second because a lot of people don't realize the most stabilizing ligamentous force in your spine is the annulus fibrosis. Kind of good for us to remember that. Uh, we also show MRIs where applicable and x-rays. And then again, we give our basic levels. We show some kinesiology for each area where it's relevant, range of motion. And this is huge. If you're trying to assess somebody and you want to figure out what's wrong, you have to figure out when I lean my head to the side, what am I stretching? What am I compressing? What's being activated? What are my potential pain generators? Students are responding hugely to these drawings that we have right here that go ahead and show that with the list of structures. And it's not just muscles. It's bones, it's ligaments, it's nerves, it's blood vessels, it's fascia, it's going to be lymphatics. All of that is moved when you're moving, right? Okay, then we go ahead and take you into inclinometry for, incl inclinometry for the spine, really, which would be goniometry for the extremities. We show passive range of motion as well. And then we do more kinesiology, like level pelvic motions, disc motion. Of course, anterior posterior pelvic tilts are all there. And then we break down the muscles again, muscle by muscle. We're looking through and just seeing, you know, rectus abdominis. This is a good example. Origin insertion, key things to get in bold. And then we break it down into less key things. Video of palpation, video of muscle testing. And then all of the exercises right here. We don't just give you one, we give you five or six. So that if you're working with a patient, you could actually open this up and say, you know what, I think you're a good fit for this, or maybe you're not such a good fit for this. And then you can see how you could progress those exercises over time, potentially. So that's the basic layout of the entire bot of the entire body of the entire book. If we break it down a little bit further, uh, we can scroll ahead and get into the neurovascular chapter. So this neurovascular chapter is at the end, you've done all of your muscles, all of the muscles of the body are there. So in the neurovascular chapter here, you can see basic layouts of the neuroanatomy where we take each individual nerve, we show homunculus, pathways that travel down, we take you into joint mechanoreceptors, sympathetic, parasympathetic, and it's not just fight or flight, it's fight, flight, or freeze, as we know the research supports that as a potential outcome when you are overstimulated in a sympathetic way. Then we go dermatomes, myotomes with muscle testing, with deep tendon reflexes, with dermatomes. One quick area where students can find that information quickly and make it easy to integrate into their brains and integrate into practical application. I am not about wasting time if there's no practical application for the information. Then we lay down body regions by detail. 
I'll skip through a bunch of this stuff really quick because it's all the same kind of thing where we talk about each nerve. Oh uh, yes, should go back just a little bit. Blood vessels are there as well. So let me go ahead back just a bit. Okay, then we break each individual nerve down. So you can see things, sciatic nerve is a pretty popular one. So we can see anatomical variation of the sciatic nerve with the piriformis muscle. And this is actually based on over, I wanna say 2000 cadaver dissections with a study where this came from. Yeah, 2,250 cadaver dissections. That's a lot, that's pretty, da that's pretty good data to get that information from. We also talk about the sciatic nerve, how it runs, what it supplies, how you might stretch it, whether it was nerve flossing or a dural slump test or a straight leg raise and common sites of compression. Again, direct clinical relevance of the information that you're getting. We talk about cranial nerves in detail. Oh, students just love this table of the cranial nerves because it gives you all the cranial nerves in one table and how to examine them and what happens if something goes wrong with them. Direct relevance again. And of course we break down the blood vessels. People like simple schematic drawings. Again, take this test, sorry, take this test. Yeah, take this test, cover up this page and you have an instant quiz if you just cover the numbers there to see if you know blood vessels, arteries or veins of the body. Do you know of the upper extremity? Do you know of the lower extremity? If you are inst an instructor, you've got an instant quiz right here. Of the head and neck, paying particular attention to that vertebral artery if your students are gonna be, ever be doing cervical joint mobilizations. Uh, we even talk about lymphatics as well. And then we go into the assessment chapter and the assessment chapter has a lot of good information in it. It's taking you through history, so chief concern history, outcome markers, pain assessment, with current pain science research, referred pain, psychology of injury, then we go into inspection, then we go into palpation, motion assessment, neurovascular screens, and even diagnostic imaging. So we follow our basic hypnose protocol, hypnose protocol. And if you're not clear, if you haven't seen my writing before, everything I do follows this protocol. If you pull out the orthopedic conditions book, if you pull out orthopedic assessment, Everything goes through history, inspection, palpation, and motion. So it's an easy gambit for students to follow, for clinicians to follow in practice to avoid malpractice issues and get better assessments and better outcomes for their patients from it. Patients or clients, depending on your jurisdiction. So key history considerations, we talk about outcome markers, posture, pain scales, activities of daily living, strength and endurance, all that good stuff. Pain science is there. Visceral referral patterns, because you don't want to get tricked thinking it's a musculoskeletal injury when it could be a visceral issue. And we continue on for psychology and pain. Body composition is there because we know it's direct relation to health. Uh, more on body composition, postural assessment, even seated and sleeping postural assessment that many books actually miss. And then we're gonna go into inspection for posture and gait and then gait and gait types and running and stride length and all of that and gait cycles and barefoot running. Lots of good information here for you. And if we go beyond that, we get into the skin for more inspection. And we talk about co common skin lesions because a lot of us as healthcare providers may be the first ones to see somebody with a skin lesion. So we have to be able to identify at the very least to know when to refer somebody out. And palpation scales that you might use with a patient, trigger point theories and trigger points themselves. We actually went on a big rant the last couple of years and made about 30 posters, and these are two of them right here, and the content is in the book throughout. We talk about palpation of spinal levels and flexibility assessments, goniometry in detail, grades of mobilization have to be there, pathologic end fields, regular end fields as an overlaying before you get into your, pull it out here, joint play and mobilizations, if that's something that you like to do. And I would suggest you might like to do that. Muscle testing again, and then we give each body region gets a summary, summary page of the upper limb muscle testing and range of motion. Same thing for spinal, same thing for lower limb. So all of that information is there. Then we go into fitness assessment, and this is key. What is your fitness assessment? We look at sit-ups, push-ups, pull-ups, squats, burpees, and even sit and reach tests. We have great data on that where you can assess. Deep tendon reflexes are there, blood pressure is there. Pulse assessment is there. Referred pain again, how you could be tricked. Imaging guidelines. When should you take imaging? How important is it? What is its real relevance for practice? And then we go into selected imaging types and why you might order them. And then we get into the action section of this book. So the action section is graded exercise exposure using the ACE technique. 
You're going to look at alignment and activation first. Then you're gonna go for control, motor function, and breathing. And lastly, you're looking for endurance. And your graded steps are from the time of injury, going isometric, basic range of motion, strength, strengthening the tissue, plyometrics, uh, and then we've got building up speed and return to full activity, okay? Functional capacity and return to activity. We look at health and well-being. What are the evidence-based from systematic review meta-analyses for the best outcomes for people? We also go into detail around what does healing actually look like, reminding you again of tissue-specific injuries because different tissues heal at different rates. We talk about the healing process for muscles, for bones, for ligaments, for nerves, all of that's in here activity levels throughout the day. And then we talk about the benefits of exercise, how activity is medicine, muscle fibers, red and white, what your training is going to result in and what your goals are you're shooting for with this. Exercise intensity, exercise recovery. Sleep is there again, because we know it's so foundational for our recovery. And then we finish off with some protecting your back. You know, nutrition has to be there as foundational for your overall evaluation of a patient and looking at their outcomes. If nutrition isn't there, they're gonna have a tough time meeting their daily requirements and healing. We look at tissue adaptability, signs of overtraining, detraining effect. We just define the term sets, reps. How many reps should I do? Negative, EMOM, compound movements, DOMS, all this good stuff is there. And then we look at treatment options and exercise prescription and exercise intensity. So we talk about rated perceived exertion, training zones, percent maximum heart rate, all from the American Council of Exercise and a few other sources as well. And then of course we break it down and there are literally thousands of images of body weight, resistance training, staff exercises. So if you take a staff dowel rod or a broom at home, whatever you have, roller ball, body ball, yoga block exercises, barbell, kettlebell, dumbbell, ring your bell, you name the exercise, we've got them there, all right? Suspension gyms, acrobatics, these are always fun. It's a great way to motivate people potentially is to get them up and doing things in partners or, or uh, as a group. It's a fantastic way to do it. I teach a lot of yoga classes. We have a yoga book that we've written that we uh, do seminars every year in Hawaii, so maybe we'll see you out for one of those. Traditional Thai massage, partner exercises, kinesio taping, and then we go into yoga and its benefits. And we look at some Tai Chi and different yoga positions you could get into. It's basically movement therapy is what you're looking at. Stretching, what is the evidence to support stretching? What can it do, what it cannot do? Stretching straps, body weight stretches. And then we give you an exercise prescription referral, weekly progress tracker, where you can monitor a patient over time or they can monitor themselves to self-empower. That also is the same information in this book right behind me right here, 1,000 No Gym Workouts, which I'm giving out to patients like crazy in my own practice and they are loving it. And then we can go into burgers exercises and workstation ergonomics, of course, something you want to evaluate as more and more people are in an urbanized environments spending so much time seated. And then potential benefits of massage, evidence for massage and manual therapies, hot and cold treatment options, and of course, self-care has to be there. And then we finish off with, of course, every chapter, like I said, has case studies and indexes, and you can progress all the way through there. And then into the index, we go into healing factors, different types of injuries, and an index and all of that good stuff. That'll take you through to the end of this book. So if you have any questions or comments on this, I'm more than happy to hear them if they're constructive. And like thousands and thousands, I shouldn't say that, like millions of other people, hopefully you find this useful and can help you do better in practice. And I look forward to hearing from you or any feedback you might have. Thank you very much for your time.